Hey fam, it is your girl, the one and the only spicy, and I'm back today with another pick a card reading. I hope that you all are having a blessed day. I hope that you all are feeling well. I'm feeling well. I'm blessed. I'm grateful, and I'm most definitely excited to be here doing another reading for you all today. So if you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, I would like to give you all a special welcome back. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and click that button and join the fam today because I promise that you'll love it here. And also make sure you check out all of the links and information in the description box so the question that we are asking spirit today this is just an entertainment based reading i don't know if i'm going to give you all too much advice but if advice comes out then it does we're asking spirit how do people feel when you remove your energy okay so how do people feel or even how do they react when you remove your energy from their life, you know, maybe remove your energy from the connection that you had with them. So if you are new to pick a card readings and you don't really know how this goes, you can take a look at the three different pile options that you have in front of you. For pile one, we have the mermaid tarot with the citrine crystal. For pile two, we have the modern witch tarot with the green fluorite crystal. And then for pile three, we have the ethereal visions luna edition tarot deck with the amethyst crystal. So pause the video right now if you need to take a look at the three different pile options. Options. Then you're going to go to the description box, scroll down to the timestamps and click the timestamp that correlates with the pile or the piles that you have chosen and I will see you at your reading. All right, pile one. So the question that we're asking spirit today is how do people feel <laughs> or even react when you remove your energy? But yes, before I even get started, I definitely want to say welcome to all of the new viewers. And I want to give a special welcome back to all of my lovely returning subscribers. I definitely want to take a second to continue to thank y'all for tuning in and engaging with my channel and with my readings. And I look forward to continuing to be consistent and dropping more readings that you all enjoy. So thank y'all so much. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and click that button and join the fan today. And also make sure you check out the links and information in the description box as well. There is an option to donate to this channel if you would like to, or you could even join my channel memberships, which start at $2 per month if you would like to show me some more love. <laughs> but yes, if you're not actually able to donate, then the best thing that you can do is to engage. That's through liking, commenting, sharing the videos if you would like to, of course, subscribing. So yeah, just consider doing that if you know that you've been here for a while and you have not done so already. But yeah, pile one, let's go ahead and get started because y'all already know the question we're asking Spirit today. So let's see. In addition to the Mermaid Tarot, I have like three other Oracle decks that I'm going to be using for some more information. Okay, so we have the Seven of Pentacles within the Reverse. We have the Two of Cups. We also have the Hierophants. We have the Hierophants. We also have the Eight of Cups. You have the Seven of Cups. It's a lot of Cups energy. And you also have the emperor. So I feel like when it comes to you, you typically tend to remove your energy from people or from even relationships that aren't really going anywhere. Like if you feel like there's a relationship that you're a part of and it's not progressing or there's no evolution you know there's no growth then that's when you typically will tend to leave a connection you're the type of person who feels like it's important for you to be pleased or it's important for you to be content or it's important for you to be happy when you're in connections with others so when you're not necessarily feeling that that investment is happening if you feel like you're not receiving any results or that things are moving very slow if you feel like you're not fulfilling any goals that you might have within this connection or you feel as though you're not really experiencing the full potential of what things could be, then you're going to just distance yourself. You're going to distance yourself. 
I feel like you're someone who relies heavily on things being like solid, stable. And I think you're also someone who really likes the aspect of like structure and discipline. So I feel like for you, there's a sense of control that you like to have over your life, of course, and the choices that you make. I feel like you're someone who could be very serious. So you try to be as mature as possible. You don't really try to choose relationships or choose connections with people that could potentially be the wrong thing for you. But I feel like you're very smart and you're very aware. So when you start to realize that these connections are not like mutually reciprocal or that you're not receiving what you want out of it in any type of connection or relationship that you are in, it's like you're smart enough to understand that you have to make some changes and you have to go back to the drawing board and you have to make the best decision that you can make for yourself. So you're very mature. Even if you make a mistake, you give yourself a certain type of grace to go back and figure out what it is that you're missing. You are definitely someone who really wants to be happy and you want to live a satisfied life. You want to be comfortable in life and your personal fulfillment and I also heard enjoyment of life is just important to you. So when you're not experiencing reciprocation, you have no issues with moving on. And it doesn't mean that you move on to other connections or you move on to consuming yourself with other people. In general, it's like you would rather just move on to focus solely on yourself. So you're very individualized in that in that type of way. I feel like you're someone who likes progress. Like you're someone that likes movement. You like things happening. You know, you could be someone who does a lot of different things in your life or you might have a lot of different responsibilities or just things that you like to do, even creative projects or hobbies. And you like to see things progress. You want to see the fruits of your labor. You want to see the manifestations of your goals or of your wishes or of your desires. So when it comes down to connections with people, it's like if you don't see those things, if that's not something that you're experiencing, then you'd rather go where the energy is taking you. So you're a very energetic person. Like you just like when things are moving, you like motion. So when things are not moving, I think that's like kind of problematic for you. So yeah. <laughs> it's it's very problematic for you yeah even here with the with the nine of wands like when things are moving i feel like you you might feel a bit off okay you feel like what's going on here um when i see the nine of wands this is kind of the energy of like your head being on swivel where you're like trying to observe and figure out like okay what's going on here like why are things stuck like what's going on <laughs> but yeah i think that when you receive this lack of reciprocity or lack of mutuality that you may experience um, just from people, it makes you kind of bored. It makes you bored in a sense, because I think you're always someone who likes when things are pushing and moving forward. Now, I will say like <laughs> everything isn't going to always be moving. I feel like there could be like a lot of starts and stops in life or things could just be in a slow period or in a slow cycle. So I would just say, like, get used to the fact that, you know, maybe things don't always have to move and progress quickly with people or even within your connections or relationships to people. I feel like sometimes things have to take time. But, hey, I mean, as far as when it comes down to you, maybe you're someone who values, like, traditional relationships or, you know, traditional connections with people. So it's like, if you're in a love relationship, you may want something that is, you want something that is traditional or the process of that love relationship that you develop with someone, you might want it to go in a traditional way. Or even if it's like friendships, you might want to build friendships in a organic way. I don't think you really like things that are too unorthodox is what it seems like. <laughs> you don't really like unorthodox things. So, but there is an aspect of potential control again here, like I said, where it's like you like to know what's going on with your friendships or with your relationships with people so we even have here when i split the deck with the five of cups so i feel like you tend to remove your energy when you experience a sense of like just disappointment and loss i feel like you tend to internalize your mistakes or decisions as opposed to kind of blame others i feel like that's what's coming up here but 
yeah, just here with the five of cups, I feel like when you're disappointed in the the interactions, I think interaction is a big thing for you because I feel like I said, you like movement, you like motion, you like things going on. You like a lot of different things going on. You be very fiery, like I said, in that way. You enjoy a good time. And it's like when you're not having that good time anymore, you just feel some type of way about it. You feel like the good times are are over. So I think you tend to pull back when you don't see that there's much progress happening. I definitely feel like even here with the Emperor, when I split the deck with the King of Pentacles, there's a there's kind of an aspect of like stability here. And even with the Hierophant, the Hierophant provides stability through those greater structures or even you being traditional. So it seems like you actually do try, okay? It seems like you do try. It seems like you will put in an effort. But when the effort is just not reciprocated, then, okay, you know, that's a problem. But it's like with the King of Pentacles and the Emperor showing up, it's like you're very much a leader. So the other thing I would tell you about this is the fact that, like, everyone isn't necessarily going to be able to put in the same amount of effort, stability, discipline, and control that you can provide, okay? Everyone isn't going to be able to provide those things. So regardless of what type of connection or relationship that you're involved in, it's like you're a pillar to that relationship. So it might be hard for people to, you know, match your level of investment or what you're willing to do because you're showing up really strong here. The Hierophant, the King of Pentacles, and the Emperor, like, you're showing up very strong here, also very intelligent, and you have the ability to look at things from the bigger picture. So because you have the ability to look at things for the bigger picture, I feel like you're always questioning like, well, what if I continue investing into this and I'm not seeing any results? Like, what if, what if? So I think that's kind of what will push you away from from dealing with certain people or being in certain relationships because you're caring more so about the long-term potential or the bigger picture. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Um, how do people feel or react when you decide to remove your energy? It seems like your energy is very stable here. It would inspire someone to be very secure, to be connected to you. So let's see. I kind of wanted to keep going with the mermaid tarot, but I think I need to move on to these oracle decks over here. All right, so I'm going to use the Psychic Tarot for the hearts. Okay, so we have here with Detach. We also have here Darkest Fears. And then we also have here solar plexus. So I think that you really are, like I said, a very stable and also very powerful like life force within the lives of others. I feel like when it comes down to you, like when you say that you're going to do something or you say that you're going to show up, you really actually do. I feel like you're very dependable. Like I said, you're like a pillar. You you actually are like the ideal person to like be in a connection with or to be in a relationship with. It just seems like you're very dependable and very loyal. And that's something that people feel. And like when you're not there, it's like they're, they don't have that sense of stability and security because that's what you naturally are providing. What I also heard is what you're naturally exuding. Like you exude stability, providing, protection, responsibility, wisdom, knowledge, experience, like you're very mature. So yeah, like when people don't have that, they feel just like a lot is going on. Like they feel a lot. This is not necessarily the most positive energy. This is an energy of someone who could be experiencing mental anguish or just experiencing potential nightmares or insomnia or just deep regrets or even just obsessive and ruminating thoughts. So it pretty much forces people to have to figure things out on their own because I think that when you are in a relationship or connections, you provide a lot of support, whether that be materially 
or even emotionally because we do have some some cups here as well but i'm picking up more so like materially and just foundationally in general this it doesn't just have to be material but i think that there's a lot that you actually can bring to the table so it kind of forces people to have to figure out their life or to figure out things on their own it forces people to pretty much have to see things from a different perspective and it forces them to have to think about how life would be like without this sense of stability and security that you're able to to provide it forces them to have to look at their own sense of energy expenditures and having to understand that they weren't properly also investing into a connection with you. Even though you might have a bit much more to offer, it still does not mean that they don't have to really do anything to maintain any type of connection with you. So it definitely forces them to have to see themselves and to see the connection from a different perspective. And sometimes it's like, even there with the nine of swords, it's like sometimes people just don't want to see it or oftentimes they might try to distract themselves. But at the end of the day, it's like the thoughts and the feelings really will just come rushing to them. It'll just come rushing to them. And they're pretty much forced to have to confront those things or to confront those feelings or to confront thoughts that they're thinking. It puts people in a crazy place mentally <laughs> this is all I can say it puts them in a crazy place mentally like it forces them to have to to have to think you know to think about their own cause of maybe why you decided to remove your energy from them it forces them to think about their own personal choices that they have made that may not have worked out positively for them and it just forces them to have to see the truth and to also become a bit much more mature and understand that you can't really get something for nothing. Like you have to actually invest in order to receive what it is that you want to receive out of anything, to be quite frank, like anything in life. So, okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next question. And it's like, why do they react or why do they feel this way? You know, why do they react and why do they feel this way? We have here with caring connections. Like I said, they have to reimagine the connection between the both of you or they have to see it from a different perspective. They have to realize that in order to get what it is that they want, that they're going to have to be willing to surrender and sacrifice something. In the case of this pile and the people that are around you, the people that you tend to move your remove your energy from, they tend to be uh, very lazy and not as proactive. And like I said, people that could potentially be entitled or just have an expectation for what they should be receiving out of the connection or relationship with you. Um, but they don't necessarily care about doing anything to ensure that that is the result that they are receiving. So why do they feel or react this way? Pretty much they feel that they feel this way because like you've been coming up with the seven of cups. So that just kind of lets me know that there is options and opportunity for you. There's always something else that you can do and you're very mature. So you going into the seven of cups energy, there really isn't a risk of, even if you choose wrong, there really isn't a risk of you staying in that energy for too long. There's never really a risk of you being kind of in la la delusional land or just in your imagination for too long. Like you do give yourself the opportunity to see what is there and then you choose. Like I said, even if you make a mistake and choose wrong, you choose the wrong person, you choose the wrong relationship, you have the maturity to move on from that and to go back to the drawing board. So yeah, pretty much they feel or react this way because they realize that they actually do have a deeper connection with you. They do actually see your worth and they see your value even there with the King of Pentacles. But now they're, they feel as though you there's multiple options and opportunities for you that you have multiple doors that are open in your life, whether it's other relationships or even if it's just other things that you could potentially be doing with your life. That's what it is. And then we also have here with attachment, 
like I said, I think that people are very attached to your life force and it seems like you're a very powerful person. So, I mean, they react in this way where they're just experiencing a lot of mental ang anguish and also her doom and gloom. You know, they're experiencing that because they're actually very much attached to you. A lot of the people that you meet or tend to have relationships with may not really have a sense of self or know who they really truly are for one reason or another. Or a lot of them could also be very like codependent, like just depending on others to give them life, to give them joy or to give them pleasure. Like I said, the person or the people on your mind, they are very entitled and they need to understand well, they don't need to do anything, but it would be highly encouraged for them to just get in touch with themselves and within their own power and potential, as opposed to attaching themselves to another person who has a lot of power and potential and seems to be very promising. When it comes to life in general, you know, you all could be doing very well for yourself or creating some type of long-term wealth and stability here. And then also just you're very smart and intelligent as well. So you could be very tapped into spirituality. You can be very religious, but you definitely have a lot of life experience. So regardless of how old you are, it's like you are definitely someone who learns from your life lessons. So yeah, a lot of the people you meet tend to be very attached. They're very attached to your life force. And yeah, they're just experiencing a lot of anxiety about what you could potentially choose that is not them or okay, what is actually next for you? So let's go ahead and move on to the Divine Feminine Oracle. Let's move on to the Divine Feminine Oracle. Like, and how do they see you currently? How do people see you currently? Or how do they view you currently? So we have here with ignore <laughs> we have ignore so when you remove your energy of course they definitely feel ignored we also have here new you so they just feel like you're on to the next thing we even have here red flags so they may feel as though you have like acknowledged the red flags and this is potentially why you have removed yourself from them remove your energy from them like especially if these people or this person that's on your mind has some issues here with codependency. You might view that as a potential red flag. You can view that as potentially toxic um, because it's like you more so value even up here with the two of cups, like more than just an attachment. It's like you actually value connection, whether it's romantic or not. It's like there's a certain type of intimacy that you actually do value within your relationships. You like closeness. So once you start to see that, okay, this may be an attachment as opposed to connection, then okay, there's your, there's the red flags that start popping up. So yeah, and then we even have here with chemistry. So with red flags and chemistry, they just see that the potential chemistry is not there anymore because now you are kind of being aware of some things that are not healthy and that could be very toxic for you. So Let's see if we can get one more. Let's see if we can get one more. And then we also have shapeshifter here as well. So shapeshifter with new you, pretty much you're just not the same person and that's how they see you. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave this reading where it is because I didn't really have too much to say about advice, but I hope you enjoyed this reading. Definitely make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see y'all in the next one. Be blessed, ma'am. All right, my pile two people, if you chose the Modern Witch Tarot deck with the green fluoride crystal, then I'm going to go ahead and get started with your reading for today. But of course, if you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, I would like to give you all a special welcome back. Shout out to all of my lovely returning subscribers. I definitely want to thank y'all for just being so amazing for engaging with me and even the content on my channel. I look forward to posting even more readings that you all enjoy, remaining as consistent as possible and supporting you as best as I can. So thank y'all so much. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and click that button and join the fam today. And also make sure you check out the links and the information in the description box as 
well there is an option to donate to this channel if you would like to or you can even join my channel memberships which starts as low as two dollars per month but if you're not able to donate to this channel then the best thing that you can do is to engage that is through liking commenting sharing the videos subscribing and you know just even sharing which piles you chose and how the reading resonated with you so definitely consider engaging if you're not able to donate at this time but yeah let's go ahead and get started with the reading for today pile two we're asking spirit how do people feel or even react when you remove your energy so if you want to think about a specific person then you can do that as well but i'm trying to look at it as far as people in general that means we're looking at a lot of different types of relationships not just <laughs> romantic intimates all right so we have strength We have the Nine of Wands. I feel like you tend to remove your energy from people when you begin to experience like PTSD. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, but it's like when you start to experience PTSD or some type of triggering that reminds you of something from the past, you really start to glitch and that's when you want to remove yourself from others and you know your relationships or connections to them when you start to be reminded of crazy things that you've experienced so let's say that person or those people or that community if they do something to you that triggers something unfair or unjust or painful that you've experienced in the past or even traumatic that's when you have to remove yourself out of that connection or out of that relationship or circumstance or situation like so once you start getting triggered that's when you feel like it's time to go <laughs> once you start getting triggered i feel like you all could have some trust issues here with people and we even have death in reverse yeah it definitely has to do with the past so i mean my advice to you would just be Get some mental health help if you need to so that you can start to let things go from the past so you're not still clinging to things that have happened to you. But I do see that, you know, you've been through a lot in your past. So once someone does something to you, or like I said, it, tri it triggers you to think back to what you've experienced before that was painful, like you really can't do it. You start to feel as though, okay, maybe this person is toxic for me. Maybe this relationship is toxic or maybe even here with the devil. It's like this relationship is trying to keep you bound and restricted or attached to something that is just not good for you. So I think you've experienced a lot in your past. So you already kind of have trust issues when it comes to dealing with people anyway, but you just want to ensure that you are not a part of some type of toxic situation. You want to make sure that you're not joining yourself with someone or to a relationship that could take you backwards or that you could potentially experience what you have experienced before that was so painful and just so limited, okay? And it also was something that kept you in your shadow energies. But I'm gonna get some more cards here. <laughs> so it's even. So we have three at the top and three at the bottom. So that is even. We even have here with the queen of wands within the reverse. I think a lot of the people that you tend to meet are just mean. It's like a lot of the people that you tend to meet seem to be very mean. They could even be manipulators. They could even be narcissists. Like, so it's like if you get a glimpse of narcissism within your connections or within your relationships with people or a specific person, it's like once you get a glimpse of potential narcissism, you got to get out of there. That's pretty much what it is for you because you it seemed like the narcissism and even the abuse and the toxicity you've experienced in the past is like very much still something that you're grappling with that you're dealing with this is why you be having these intense trust issues now you're still trying to move forward in life you still are but i feel like you're still kind of anxious where it's kind of like the idea that okay this person could potentially hurt me or you're potentially waiting for the other shoe to drop so 
I think that at this point in time, you just have to choose to want to give yourself peace and relief, making peace with what happened to you in your past. But I do understand that you don't want to continue to keep dealing with the same painful, toxic relationships or dealing with the same mean type of people. Like once you experience that someone is like possessive over you or once you experience that they could potentially be like jealous or even maybe manipulative and controlling it's like you don't really like to be in that type of situation you don't really like to be in that type of relationship so yeah it seems like you tend to distance yourself from a lot of mean people you know what i'm saying we even have here with the chariot yeah <laughs> yeah so you really do have to reason with your past I think that you are healing though. You're healing. You're healing. You just have to continue to keep going. It seems like the healing is not yet over. So what I would say is, is just look for additional opportunities or things that you can do to reason with. Well, I don't want to say reason or to, it's all about giving yourself the peace that you deserve. Okay. And understanding that you went through what you went through in the past, but that does not necessarily have to live with you as you move into your future. So that's all I'm saying. So just ensure that you're looking for additional opportunities to give yourself the relief that you need for yourself, okay? That peace that you need for yourself. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, because it's a lot of fear here. You have some real trust issues and you fear potentially being hurt. But the thing I can say about you is you're very powerful. You are definitely someone here with his strength and the chariot. Like you're so self-aware and you can be so vulnerable and honest and open with yourself. And I think you already know that you're still dealing with things from your past. I don't think that me telling you that information would make you feel upset or mad or some type of way. I feel like you are someone who's very vulnerable. Like, And I see why you're trying to protect yourself because you're trying to protect your heart. You know how vulnerable and sensitive that you can be. So you're trying to protect that. You don't want the things that you've been through to change you but you still have, you know, some trust issues, but you don't want it to necessarily change you as a person. Like if you don't want it to change your heart. So you are, you actually are a very empowered person. You have a lot of courage and strength and just even courage to be able to move forward within your life, regardless of what you've experienced in your past. There's still the energy here, even with the nine of wands, with the chariot of you still being able to push and move forward, navigating obstacles and challenges that are, happening in your life and just persevering and just doing what you have to do so you have the strength here and then with the chariot you also have the emotional resilience as well so you still be moving forward i can tell you that you still do so it seems like you got to get out of there fast because when i see the chariot it's a fast moving type of energy like i gotta go and then on this card here, I see the person is holding this uh, wand, which is very reminiscent of the magician. So you are someone who has to think very quickly, okay? You have to think very quickly. You have to remember what you've experienced before in your past and allow that to force you to move, okay? It's kind of like taking all of your knowledge, everything that you've learned, all of your wisdom and applying it to your current situation, and when you're in an unhealthy connection, an unhealthy dynamic, some type of attachment that you feel like doesn't empower you, but will only, you know, make things worse, you know, maybe even make you all act out in different ways that are reminiscent of your shadow that aren't really who you are as a person. I mean, our shadow is a part of us. Our shadow is a part of us, but I don't think it's connected to our higher self like that, other than the fact of, yeah, it's there and you do need to master your shadow side. So yeah, it is connected, but y'all know what I'm saying. Once you start living within your higher self, you are completely aware of what your shadow self is and you try your best to not live through those shadow attributes because you know yourself. Like you really will take your knowledge, your wisdom from what you have experienced before and you allow that to help you take action on moving out of these connections. So it's a lot here, but yeah, this this is why you typically will tend to remove your energy when you experience stuff like this with people. So let's go ahead and move on and see how do people feel or react when you, when you do this, when you remove your energy from them or from connections with them.
So we have here moving on. We have here moving on. Which, hey, I mean, in the case of you dealing with a lot of mean and potentially narcissistic people, like, that's actually good, okay? Like, the moving on is, is actually, <laughs> is good. Then we also have here uh, with the tower. So it could be very unexpected because the tower is oftentimes very sudden, unexpected, and it could be a very chaotic and challenging energy. Now, with you being the person that will tend to remove yourself and remove yourself as quick as possible here with the chariot energy, like it, it it's, it's unexpected for this person or for these people. It's not something that they thought would happen. It could even be a bit shocking, but it seems like you're the person that is the initiator. So it kind of tears everything down. And I mean, I feel like they have no other option but to, to move on from this because you're very empowered, you're determined, and you're intellectual. So there's clearly, even here with the aspect of the magician, there's intentions behind why you're removing yourself. So it's it's too much for someone to convince you to stay. Too much for <laughs> there to be some type of change within the situation and now you're still here. It's kind of like your fears of not being hurt <laughs> are kind of like the thing that is pushing you forward but in the case of these unhealthy people that you're with it's kind of like you're still doing a, a good thing here because you don't want to potentially experience more of the same but yeah with the tower is definitely very shocking and sudden it's, it's it could be very chaotic here as well it forces them to have to uncover deception or like if, if these people had some type of negative or toxic agenda for your involvement or relationship or connection to them, then it's like, it forces their plans to have to, it dismantles their plans basically. So if there's any deception, it's like it dismantles these people's plans. Like even here with the lightning, I just see that you're very very powerful so when you leave it's it's a powerful bold step that you're taking so yeah you be tearing stuff down pretty much so <laughs> that's what happens when you remove your energy like any type of connection or i don't know relationship that you thought that you had with this person or with these people it's like you quickly find out that it was maybe false or it was built on false pretenses, or it's just like the aspect of things not really being strong, stable, and foundational. So you kind of see that, you know, maybe you were involved in a superficial connection, or you were potentially involving yourself in an unhealthy attachment. So that's all I'm saying. They'd be shocked. They'd be very surprised. I'm gonna get some more on moving on. But yeah, with uh, choose your battles, it seems like they could be very defensive or trying to like argue with you or like argue their point or how they see things. It seems like when you leave, it's like people might get on like a moral high horse, that type of thing. And it seems like when you leave these people, they tend to or this person it's like they tend to talk about you. So they could be talking about you acting like saying things like, oh, you're acting like you're switching up. Or they could say, oh, you acting like you're brand new. They just could potentially be trying to attack you or attack where, where you are at this point. Yeah, so we have moving on and we also have seven of cups. So, I mean, it's... I have to say this, but it's like a lot of these connections that you end up removing yourself from are actually very superficial. So I'm not saying that you're not special. I'm not saying that you're not important. I'm not saying that you're not unique. I'm not saying that, but to these people that you're involving yourself with, it's like they can just go find another person, especially if this is narcissistic relationships, they can just go find another supply. That's what they can do. They can just go find something else or find someone else to develop some type of friendship with or develop some type of relationship with even here with the Ace of Cups. So 
all they're going to do is look for another opportunity or another relationship or another connection with another person. So you leave these people's lives, it's completely okay. All they're going to do is try to go find someone else, something else that can occupy their time or someone else or something else that can provide maybe what you were providing to them. But here with uh, the strength card, I feel like you provide actual empathy. You know, regardless of what you went through, it's like the core of who you are and your heart is, it, it never changed. It's very strong and resilient. So you could be someone who provides a lot of compassion and a lot of empathy. So when you combine that with toxic people, it's not really a good combination there. Like it's going to experience some type of chemical reaction, which is this tower moment right here. Like it can't last and it can't persist. So why do they react or feel this way? Why do they react or feel this way? Some of them could be a bit delusional here too. Like I said, with this moral high ground. So the delusion, the moral high ground, all of that kind of ties in with them potentially smearing your name or trying to um, influence other people's opinions. So I just heard the court of public opinion. So trying to influence other people's opinions and perspectives of you because you left their life. That's crazy. But why do they react or feel this way? I feel like I maybe answered some of that. But woman holding a heart. Yeah. This is the empathy. This is the love. This is, they act this way because of what you can provide. And they're just mad. Like, <laughs> they're just mad. Because you can provide love. You can provide, like I said, empathy, compassion. Like, when I see woman holding a heart, it gives me queen of cups vibes. It's like... You definitely are going through your stuff that you've experienced in the past, but it's like you could still show up for other people as well. So all of the love that you provide to others, it's time for you to really provide that love to yourself. Looking for ways that you can give yourself the peace and love, specifically the unconditional love that you need or deserve at this point in time in your life. So yeah, this why they act in this way. I guess they feel like... Um, I guess they feel like they could potentially get that elsewhere, especially with the Ace of Cups, that they could develop that elsewhere. But pretty much they're just feeling some type of way because you really do provide true love, compassion, and care. Like, that's what you really do provide. And also, the fact that you provide that, that this is within you, it shows that you can be good elsewhere. So you even after breaking up or maybe leaving a love relationship or a friendship it's like you can go find someone else or another relationship or another friendship it's like you can go offer what your you can go offer your what do i want to say i guess your love and care to someone else or to something else <laughs> yeah we also have door to romance door to romance here as well so these people could be a bit upset because it's like you have other opportunities as well or there's other new beginnings that you can actually look forward to now we do see this cage with this heart here so you might still not want to be as vulnerable <laughs> you might still not want to be as vulnerable but you would give it a chance so yeah I guess they react that or feel that way because it's like you have new beginnings as well. And I just think that I don't understand why, because it's like at the end of the day, all they're going to do is move on to someone else or to something else. But it seems like with yours, there's it's a different type of feeling. You know, it's a different type of feeling as opposed to what they have to do. It seems like they're forced to move on after you leave them. So it's not like it's coming from more of an empowered or even loving place. It's just they have to face the circumstance or situations that they're experiencing. That's just what they have to do. But you're the person that actually has choice. You're the person that has this love, empathy, compassion, and care that is within you. And you see that as a strength. These people that you're involved with, it's like they're more so caught up with attachments so it's just a different type of energy and vibe. But even though you and the people that you leave could have to go through the same process, it's just, it's different. Then we also have here a man holding a, man holding a heart. So yeah, 
man holding a heart i think this is <laughs> this is a big this is a big like all right so for y'all <laughs> what do i want to say if you're looking for new love it's on the way okay if you're looking for new love it's on the way but it seems like because you're so empowered it's like you're able to attract other like i said other relationships and other fulfilling relationships not just a potential narcissistic abusive relationship so yeah they just feel this way because they know that you can find something better okay they know that you can find something better and it seems like these people or this person could be potentially blocking your opportunities or your chances to create space for something that is a little more in alignment with who you are, what you want, or even what you have to offer. Because we have woman holding a heart and man holding a heart. So this is something that can be actually uh, reciprocal and mutual and a lot much more healthy and passionate. Like there's actual love here as opposed to attachment, like I said. So it's just, and just even your opportunity to experience like compassion and kindness, because it just seems like a lot of the people that you tend to connect with, they're mean, like just mean. They could throw like potential temper tantrums. They can be very like cruel, um, very arrogant, very egotistical. So, so yeah, like, also very spiteful they could potentially be like bullies and just people that cause trouble so yeah it seems like you're in a more empowered space than they are so the decisions that you make are a lot much more empowered they know that when you remove yourself you're gonna find exactly what it is that you want but it's not like they're not going off to figure out what's next for them but i feel like these people, because they're toxic, is like they're always in this never-ending cycle of choosing something and then maybe they don't like what they chose. And so then they have to go back and choose something else and go back. It's just the cycle when it comes down to toxic people in general. It's like they always looking for something that they don't have. They always looking for something that they don't have and then they can't maintain it because it's not within them. So they can't respect it. Whereas it seems like for you, love is within you. So you're going to have another opportunity for relationships, for connections that are going to meet you exactly where you're at because you have this love inside of you already. So that's just kind of how I see it. Let's go ahead and move on to um, how are they viewing you now? How are they currently viewing you now? The people that you have removed from your life. How are they currently viewing you now? We have self-care. Self-care. So you're taking time to yourself, focusing on you. You all could be in a four swords type of energy where you're just doing your best to rest, to relax, and to heal from what you have previously went through. We also have here with harmony so you could be a bit much more balanced at this point in time in your life you, we see that you still have more healing um to go through but i'm kind of picking up like the star energy as well like it's just a period of healing and rejuvenation after experiencing tower moments sudden upsets with people breakups with people it's just that time that you need to get back in touch with yourself um, to understand that you are an individual, that you have to make the best choices that you need to make. And everything that you do is a unique expression of just what's going on inside of you. So you all are very empowered people. So that's just what you express. You express that strength. You express that perseverance. And you express how determined you are to just experience better in life or to not have to keep going through the same BS with people. So... Yeah. And I wanted to say I'm also picking up like um, temperance energy here as well, where it's like you're trying to be as <laughs> moderate as possible emotionally. So you all could be trying to remain as emotionally neutral as possible because you just went through a lot or, you know, you're always going through things with these mean and people that just cause trouble and start problems. Like, they talk a lot too, so it's just best that you remove yourself from them anyway and just let them talk and say what they have to say. Like, you're not going to be there to listen, so you, you just can't care.
we also have something new something new so they definitely see you as a new person right now at this point in time and they also feel like you all could be experiencing new things or just new newer more fulfilling relationships like you really want to experience just better being around better people or just being in better connections you just want to experience something that you feel like you're more deserving of not something that's toxic let's see what else let's see what else and then we also have <laughs> that's funny we also have um silver platter and then also next lifetime so yeah they pretty much are seeing that you are not someone who is gonna let people get over on you or you're not someone who is going to enable others um, they also see you as someone who just is unable to give like there's literally nothing that you can that you can give there is a lot that you can give because they've experienced it already this is your kind nature your compassionate nature your caring and empathetic nature but it's like you're choosing not to not to give that okay it's like offering something to someone on a silver platter without them even working for it it's like you're not there at this point in time so you're not willing to give someone something for nothing and then we even have here with next lifetime so they're resolving with the fact that you're gone i feel like when you're gone you're really gone you know some of you all could be leo so it's like with the strength card so it's like once the and we also have queen of wands here again even though she's in reverse it's always heavy you know leo energy so it's like once the loyalty and commitment is gone you're really gone you're done so that's pretty much what they're picking up and they're trying to resolve the fact that, hey, maybe they might see you in a next lifetime. Regardless of how they feel about you or how defensive that they could be, something that they um, have to acknowledge is that you all are still sweet. Like the sweetness is still here. Like I said, regardless of what you went through with that nine of wands, the, the sweet, caring nature, your heart is still what it is. You're still empathetic. You're still willing to show love to others. You're just not showing love to toxic and potentially narcissistic and abusive people. That's just not, not what's going on. You feel like you would be betraying yourself if you did that. So yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this right here. I hope that you all enjoyed this reading. Definitely make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next one. Be blessed, fam. All right, my power three people, if you chose the Ethereal Visions Luna Edition Tarot with the Amethyst Crystal, then I'm going to go ahead and get started with your reading for today. But of course, I would like to say welcome again to all of the new viewers. And I would like to give a special welcome back to all of my lovely returning subscribers. I'm so thankful for y'all and just everything that you do as far as supporting me and engaging with my channel. I look forward to posting more readings that you all enjoy and just doing my best to remain consistent and to support y'all as best as I can. So thank y'all so much for consistently tuning in and spending time with me. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and click that button and join the fam today because I promise that you will love it here. And also make sure y'all check out the links and the information in the description box as well. There is an option to donate to this channel if you would like to. And I even have channel memberships that start as low as $2 per month if you would like to show me love. But if you're not able to donate, then the best thing that you can do is by, is to engage. Okay, that's the best thing that you can do. That is through liking, commenting, sharing the videos, subscribing, of course. And you can even share which pile you chose and how the reading resonated with you. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> let's get started, my pile three people. The question we're asking spirit is, how do people feel or react when you remove your energy? That's what we're asking. In addition to the ethereal visions, I have two other, I have two other decks that I'm going to be using um, for some more information. So we have the full. We also have the ten of pentacles within the reverse. We also have the Two of Pentacles.
yeah we have the nine of cups within the reverse i feel like you are someone who values the opinions of other people it's like you value the opinion of other people you're not someone who just feels like it's your way or the highway or you don't make space and room to be flexible with your thoughts i feel like you're a very flexible person I also feel like you could be a very educated person as well, someone who isn't like too close-minded and you will appreciate others and what they have to say. But I feel like at a certain point when the opinions of other people and even the behaviors of other people, when you feel like they start to become too like controlling or disapproving, or you just feel like there's some type of like resistance that's when you typically tend to remove yourself from people's lives or from the connections or from relationships. When you start to feel like their opinions are encroaching on your own sense of like freedom, free will and autonomy. Like once you feel like your agency is being encroached on and maybe someone is trying to control you through their opinions for your life or what they feel like you should do is like that's when you start glitching. OK, that's when you start getting a little antsy and you realize that you have to leave. Like, I definitely think that you are someone who is a free spirit. You are someone who relies heavily on your own personal sense of happiness. So when others start to give a bit too much energy or attention to your own personal decisions that you're making in life, and when they start saying things about it that aren't necessarily positive or optimistic as you would like to think or as optimistic as you feel, that's when you will have an issue and problem and try to distance yourself away. Um, for a lot of y'all, this can have to do with family as well. Like if you have distanced yourself away from your family because you just feel like they don't really agree with your stance in life or just how you live life. <laughs> that's when you start to feel like, okay, this is a bit too burdensome for me. I have to go on and do my own thing. I feel like family and relationships, just what other people is important to you. I feel like this is something that you make time for and you can make time for it. But at the end of the day, you're still a free spirit and you like to live your life that way. So if your independence is starting to be encroached upon by others, their opinions, that's when you have to, to leave. I also feel like when other people start to affect your financial stability or security, like when other people start to just affect your livelihood or your well-being, that's when you decide that you need to leave as well. Like you could definitely be one of those people that are only really looking to surround yourself with individuals that you view as assets that actually do provide something positive to your life. You would rather be around people like that as opposed to people that are liabilities that are just trying to take or even continuously questioning what your life decisions are, what you personally are doing for yourself. So you don't really like to be in displeasing connections with others. You like to have, um, I want to say it's kind of like a boundary where you just will tell people like, this is my life, I'm living my life, and this is how I live my life, and it is what it is. So you have that it is what it is type of boundary. So even though you could be a part of a community, you could be a part of a relationship, you still want there to be a space that is solely for you, like a space that you can retreat to that other people can't necessarily encroach upon. It's your space. It's what you want to do. So that's pretty much what I'm seeing here as well but yeah if someone's in your life and you realize that your financial situation is going backwards or you start to realize that things are going backwards and you're not able to focus on what is important to you like once you start to realize that someone is a potential distraction for the other important things that you need to focus on that's when you'll leave also that's when you decide to remove your energy let's see what else is going on Yeah, we have here with the three of wands. Yeah, you care a lot about what you are doing in life. You care a lot about just your time investment, your commitments to what it is that you want and expect to and hope to get out of life. I feel like you put a lot of energy into that. You're someone who's pretty future forward and you just expect the good things out of life. You're someone who can be very like expansive and progressive. 
So I guess the way that you live your life is a bit progressive at this point in time. So you can have an unconventional way that you earn money. You can have an unconventional way that you support yourself. So pretty much that's what you put first. That's really what you put first. So you don't really care too much about what other people have to say about what you do because you find your own personal sense of like satisfaction from that. You find your own sense of personal satisfaction. And even if you involve yourself in something and you're not personally satisfied by it, like you will always be looking towards the next thing for you to do. So I think you're someone who is constantly like shifting in life. And I feel like because you're a free spirit and an, and an educated person, it's like you can shift where it's just like, it seems like other people may be a bit much more stubborn or stuck or stagnant within their energy. It seems like you're always progressing, shifting, doing something different um, with your life. And it's like, when you are not able to do that, it doesn't bring you true happiness. Like you really are a free spirit. I wouldn't be surprised if you were like a nomadic person, like someone who traveled from here to there, or maybe that's how your life is supposed to turn out. You're not supposed to just be sitting in one space. This is the energy of someone who is like, you just, you're not going back to your hometown or you wouldn't be one of those people that went to school and stayed in your same hometown. So now you see the same people that you went to school with. I'm just picking up like you're someone that travels, that moves. So yeah, that's why I'm getting here as well. But like, yeah, you put a lot of time into what you hope or seek to gain um, from your labor. So it's definitely something unconventional that's, that's going on here with you. I feel like you're highly energetic. You definitely are a traveler. You are an adventurer. That's you. So if anything imposes on that, like you, you got to go. We even have here when I split the deck here with the hermit. So... That's what I'm saying. If anything imposes on that, you definitely have to go. So I think that people tend to experience like a, a ghosting from you. And I feel like it's a slight ghosting because you also have your sense of independence here as well. So sometimes people will hear from you and then other times they won't. You know, sometimes you'll be in communication with them and then other times you won't. So I think it's kind of like a semi ghosting until you completely decide to remove yourself. So I don't know if it's like a cold turkey type of thing that you do here where you stop talking to people like cold turkey. I just think it's something that like gradually declines over time. It's like you gradually stop talking to someone or you gradually separate yourself from someone. The three of wands can talk a lot about distance as well. So it's like a gradual distancing <laughs> away, especially when someone when you can um, kind of feel that someone could be disapproving of your decisions, your actions, and also potentially judging you. Like, I just think that you're someone who doesn't really like to be judged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I split the deck, I saw the judgment in reverse. Like, as I was literally saying, judge. Like, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm picking up, picking up here. Now, what I will say, the only thing that I will say is, is that if you're going to live this type of life where you are a free spirit and you don't want others to judge you, then just understand that like you have to make it work, okay? You have to make it work for yourself. And I'm not saying that you can't do that, but it's like if that's something that you know you need, which is adventure and you need to go out in the world, then make that life work for you, okay? If that's what you need, if that's what you want, if that's what you desire, like make that life work for you. That's all I'm saying. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying establish some type of stability within yourself. If you know that you can't sit in one place and you got to be traveling, you got to be on the move, then make sure that you're stable doing that and make sure that it's something that you can sustain over time. It just makes me feel like that because we have the two of pentacles energy and like the, you know, the next progression is the three of pentacles. So that's why I'm saying try to seek some type of stability because oftentimes with the two of pentacles, it's like if you're kind of in that energy for too long and it's not really organized or structured, then it could be a potential problem. You could potentially find yourself burning out or crashing out trying to juggle everything and be being as flexible as possible. So that's why I'm saying my only advice is create some type of stability and structure and organization in your life if you're going to be this free spirit out in the world doing your own thing. Once you feel like your optimism in your own life and what you're doing is starting to become like rained on, like someone raining on your parade, 
It's like, that's where you'll be like, yeah, I gotta go. Cause you're make, you're trying to make me feel like my choices in life are not good choices, but they feel good to me. That's how you would feel. It's like your choices in life feel good to you. So it seems like it's other people's self-limiting beliefs that could potentially affect you and start to make you feel like you're stuck when you were already pretty much going with the flow of how your life was taking you or how your journey in life is take where your journey in life is taking you. So yeah, once other people's opinions start to reflect themselves, I want to say, and your um, optimism, you start to feel a bit pessimistic. That's when you realize like, I got to detach myself because now I feel myself starting to become a bit much more stuck. Now I feel like I'm my my mind is being affected by the opinions of others. Now I'm starting to feel a bit limited because maybe what if I'm doing isn't right because I don't yet have that stability or security. But I mean, you're on the way and it seems like you have a lot of great things that you can look forward to that are coming back to you. So I don't know, you just have to decide, even here with the Knight of Swords, you just have to come to a firm decision that this is just what you're doing and you have to firmly move in that direction. It may seem a bit impulsive to others. Others may seem that, you know, you're liable to make mistakes here. But I guess it's, it's your life. It's your life. And essentially, it's like you have to do what's best for you. But yeah, you definitely do tend to like distance yourself away from others gradually over time. When you start to pick up that they're judging you, some of y'all might look at it as hating. You know, you might look at it as like, oh, this person is hating or like once you just feel like others are trying to like cling control, cling to control as far as how your life is going or what that de your destiny should look like or what your fate should look like. It's like, that's a problem. So you just really pretty much like to do what you like to do. Hey, that's on you. You know, you like to live your life how you like to live your life and you don't want anybody to say anything about it or to try to control the direction in which your life is going. Okay, so how do they feel or react when you remove yourself? Oh, dang, this car flew out. This car flew out. Like, how do they um, react? And we have opportunity beckons <laughs> with the four of cups. So let's see what else we get here. Because that definitely, that definitely uh, flew out. We have here heart chakra. It seems like these people take it a bit too personally. Like that's kind of what I'm picking up. Like when you don't follow their advice or if you don't address their disapproval, it's like, it seems like they take it a bit personal. It's kind of what I'm getting here. It's like they take it a bit personal. They feel like, they feel like you're being, I want to say, ungrateful. They feel like you're ignoring. And that makes them feel some type of way. Like when you just do whatever it is that you want to do, they feel like you're actually ignoring their advice or you're ignoring their wisdom. You're being unmotivated. And yeah, just also not being grateful for what they're trying to offer you. But yeah, I think they, they take it very personal. Like I want to get some more information but it's like they take your independence personal they take it personal and it's like i don't know like how i feel like is you really can't control people and what they want to do that's just how i look at it it's like you really can't control people it's like if you want to live a particular type of life then that's on you to live that life it's all about you feeling emotionally fulfilled and it's just about you feeling materially fulfilled as well it's all about your sense of comfortability it's all about your sense of happiness and just you imagining and going after the life that you that you want so i think they take this very personal like your sense of independence or your sense of self-sufficiency i feel like you all are on the way to building that self-sufficiency so Maybe at this point in time in your life, it's like they looking at you as someone who still needs guidance or you still need some type of mentorship. Like you still need someone to hold your hand or you still need someone to tell you what to do. 
So that could either be true, that could either be true, or that could just be what their perception is. I know oftentimes, even if you were previously in that energy where you need guidance and mentorship, it's like sometimes people will still see you that way. Even if you've grown, even if you've accomplished some things on your own, they still will see you as someone who needs guidance and mentorship. So they kind of still see you as the kid that needs training wheels, where you might feel like you don't really need training wheels right now at this point in time in your life. You're just out here in the world, but they still perceive you of you still need some type of guidance, like I said. But yeah, they take it very personal that they can't really control your life and that you will decide to pull back and to focus on your own sense of independence. Like here with the hermit is very much a choice. So this is something that you're choosing to do. You're fully aware of what this decision is and you need to understand yourself a lot better because you might feel as though others are perceiving you negatively. So you typically have to take a step back to get more so in, in touch with yourself, spending time to focus on what your intentions are, why you're doing what you're doing. Just stepping back to make your life make sense because it seems like when other people tell you things, it starts to become a little confusing for you. You start to question yourself. So yeah, they just feel as though you're kind of like ungrateful in a sense. And I mean, a lot of this is actually their perception here, because even here with the Ace of Wands within the reverse, it's like, it seems like a lot of the people that you tend to distance yourself from that have opinions about your life, it's like they're used to seeing things in an old way. Like they don't understand what your vision is. They don't understand why you're doing what you're doing. They're not you. So these are people that aren't necessarily going to be in the best position to support you because they don't understand what inspires you they don't understand what drives you they don't understand what makes you feel passionate they don't understand your own you know particular sense of creativity or how you want to live your life that's just not something that they understand so they close themselves off from trying to see your point of view or even trying to relate to you and just understanding that like okay so if pile three is really happy and excited about this then okay let me support not being on the type time that these people are on or this person's on where they're just kind of like okay you could be excited about something but no you need to do what i'm suggesting for you to do so they might see you as someone who's a bit unstable at this point in time but at the same time you're still an independent person so <laughs> unstable or not <laughs> unstable or not you're still doing your own thing you still have a sense of self I mean, I wanted to say strong sense of self, but it's like you still deal with the what ifs because of other people's limiting beliefs that they pretty much project onto you. So you experience pessimism through the projection of other people projecting their fears onto you. Yeah, it seems like a lot of this is really perception, but I definitely think it's because these people are taking your life decisions to heart. And they need to decenter themselves from your life and understand that you are your own person. <laughs> they need to decenter themselves. But yeah. And it also causes them, like when you decide to step back, it's like they become even more nosy. Like they want to know, like what is going on with you? Like what is going on with your life? It really makes them nosy. So they probably start to react in very nosy ways by like prying or trying to figure out information and just what you're doing behind the scenes. I feel like even here with the Seven of Swords, like sometimes the Seven of Swords energy is needed. Like this what I'm this what I'd be talking about, where sometimes it's like if you're trying to navigate or achieve a goal in life, sometimes you do have to move in silence because and you have to be strategic about it because sometimes other people will really try to get you off of your path or have you questioning yourself. So you got to move in silence because you just don't want to have to potentially face some type of confrontation and having to explain why you're doing what you're doing. Sometimes things don't really need an explanation. Like if it's something that you want to do, like it really, there's no explanation needed. Like that's something that I had to learn is like, you don't have to explain everything to everybody. But yeah, um, why do they react this way? Okay, why do they react this way? Even here with the 
first chakra, Archangel Michael. Yeah, there's something here as it relates to your stability, maybe as an adult, you know, your ability to adult, your ability to live the type of lifestyle that you want, one of freedom, one that could be a bit unpredictable, okay? One that's a bit uncertain, unknown, and then also with the full energy, a bit spontaneous, okay? So they may feel like there is no real security and stability to living a, the type of life like that you're living, okay? There's no stability there. So that's why they be reacting this way. That's why they get a bit butthurt when you don't listen to what they say or if you don't take the opportunities that they feel like could help you get to a different place in life. So we also have here with storm warning. Yeah, it's like they, they're they trying too hard to control how your life is going, okay? They're trying too hard to control. That's why when I saw the Wheel of Fortune within the reverse, it's like the idea of clinging to control and understanding that like your life is going to go how it needs to go. And that person cannot predetermine or even determine through their actions what your fate and destiny is going to be. So it's kind of just like, I don't know if this is maybe family, a mother figure, father figure that you could potentially be asking about if you asked about a specific person. But I don't know. You just don't like control. And yeah, with storm warning, they just feel like they need to help intervene so that you can avert some type of potential disaster that they are projecting you will be experiencing. Because a lot of this is perceptions for this pile at least is perceptions because they're looking at your personal life situation and lifestyle and they feel like okay like this is gonna come crashing down pretty soon so this is why they're a bit butthurt because they want to be in control of, of that they want to be in control of it I don't know. I don't really like giving people too much control over my life. That's just me. I don't really like giving people too much control. But we have well-deserved reward and we also have victory. I just feel like this person doesn't want, this person or these people don't want you to find victory, success, and achievement doing things your way. So it seems like there's some type of traditional way that they are accustomed to and they expect you to follow that way as well. But yeah, they're, they're just acting this way because they want to be in control and they want to be responsible for your success. They want to be able to say that it was a piece of information that they gave you or it was an opportunity that they gave you that helped you reach your potential or it was something that they did that helped you to achieve some type of goal or some type of desired outcome. They want to say that it was them that did it. This is the thing I don't like is because you can make it in your way. Like you can make it as long as you structure is stabilize things for yourself like you definitely can make it doing what you're doing like i said even here with the three of wands even here with the ace of wands it could be something you're very passionate about some type of creative endeavor something that you're passionate about but yeah they just don't want to see that there's a potential that you can make it in your own way doing what you want they just they have a problem with that when i put that card down then we see envy here so yeah, like I said, you would potentially pick up that these were haters. These people that you do end up like, you know, distancing yourself from and removing yourself from could very well be a bit jealous because they're putting too much thoughts and projections into what you're doing. And this is the thing that they need to understand is like any thought that they're putting into what you're doing is only going to help you further yourself. It's only going to help you to push yourself further. It's only going to help you to get what you want because they're putting a lot of thought and energy into what is going on with you so that's why it's best to not envy people that's why it's best to mind your business because you really could be helping this person manifest their wildest dreams because you're hating on what they have or what they're trying to build for themselves so yeah it's not to say that the people that you remove out of your life don't have anything going on for them at all I just think they're not living the free-spirited and optimistic life that you're living. It's just they that's not something that they're focused on. They're not focused on their own sense of personal happiness. That's not what they're really focused on. So, yeah, let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to put the MV card right here. But, yeah, let's go ahead 
and move on yeah even when i was putting this down i see um the second chakra and this chakra is it's related to like sexual intimacy but also to creativity as well so seem like you all could be very creative and passionate about something like i said so they don't want you to focus on that they want you to do something that is a bit more i want to say traditional in a sense or just not what you're doing pretty much so or not how you're living your life. All right, so let's go ahead and... Yeah, they could be jealous about that. They don't have the confidence to step into the unknown. Okay, so with this deck, this is a Divine Feminine Oracle deck. I'm going to ask, like, how do they see you now? So the people that you have removed from your life or just from your energy is like, how do they see you now? This card wanted to come out again. So they see you as someone who is ignoring blah, blah, blah. It's like you don't really care about what they have to say. All about me. Yeah. You're focused solely on you. Okay. You're focused solely on you. We also have here with the switch up. So... Yeah, they might feel like you're acting brand new, okay? They feel like you're acting brand new. Even here with the snake, there is some form of transformation that is occurring, but it could just been something that they would not really have saw coming. So they kind of look at it as like, oh, you acting brand new. That's what you're doing. You act in Hollywood. We also have here with creativity. Yeah, you all are definitely focused on your creative pursuits and what truly makes you happy. So they know deep down inside, like, that this is the best thing. Like, they know deep down inside. Because if not, they wouldn't be jealous and they wouldn't be envious. Like, they would just be like, whatever. Live your life. Do you. But that's not how they are. Let's see what else. We also have here... Oh, we have here high value. High value. Well, we do see victory here and we have the nine of pentacles. So you all could already be in a process of winning. You're making gains. You're you're experiencing milestones, you know, just within your life and within your journey. So they definitely are seeing you as a winner. Maybe you really are winning at life. You're living your life how you want to because they're celebrating you. We also have here with infatuation. Yeah, like, and that's where the hating comes in because haters really be like people that really love what you have got going on so bad like they really will love what you got going on so bad like so yeah you already know like your haters are your biggest fans that's pretty much what this is saying to me it's like your haters are your biggest fans because even on the bottom we see purpose driven so regardless of their opinions and what they have to say they love it anyway they love how you move in anyway, regardless of their opinions. You're just not listening to their opinions. So they don't essentially, they can't say that they have anything to do with your success, pretty much. So yeah, purpose driven. When I split here, we see control. Yeah, like I said, you're taking back control of your life. Like you're taking control of your life. You're doing what you want to do. You understand that you can take your life in any direction that you want to take it. It's all up to you. So that's what that is. But I'm going to go ahead and end this reading right here, pile three. I definitely hope that you enjoyed this reading. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one. Be blessed, fam.